Welcome back all my 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ here with Tim's Nation. And today we're going to be bringing you my Necron list. I'm going to be taking on Lane and his Death Watch with later today. So with my Necron Dynasty, uh, I've been calling it the Canoptic Harvest because of how many Canoptic units I have. Uh, uh, just a little bit of a throwback to the old formation days when Canoptic Harvest was a thing. So without further ado, guys, subscribe to my channel. Notify, uh, click turn on the bell for notifications so you get notified on the rest of the videos in this series. And uh, let's jump over into the Necron list. Okay, so like I said, I'm running the Novak Canoptic Harvest, which is a just a regular Necron army. Uh, it is the Novak Dynasty. So when I charge, get charged, or heroically intervene, I will get plus one uh, AP, and I also have plus one on the charge. While the protocol Hungry Void is in effect, which is going to be in effect for the entire game. I will get an additional plus one AP as well. I'm sorry, additional plus one strength as well as plus one AP on sixes to wound. So moving over into the list, my compulsory choice is fast attack. In this slot, I have two squads of wraiths. One's a five man and one's a four man. The five man squad of wraiths has claws and the two damage weapons. It does really well in the Marines as long as they're not reducing my damage. As well with the Necron Novak Dynasty Stratagem, I can give them plus one attack, as well as my Technomancer can give them plus one attack with the uh, Failsafe Overcharger. Really still getting these guys the ability to hit and beat up big things. They have a higher strength and a four up invuln. The biggest kicker to these guys over the score packs right now is the fact of that four up invuln. The other squad, the four man, has whip coils. Whip coils, every time I make one attack with these weapons, I get two attacks instead. So every time I boost these guys' attack profile, I'm looking at an additional two attacks instead of one. And with all the Novak buffs on the charge, these guys can really shred through just about everything, even Marines alike. Thank you, Armor of Contempt going away. My last squads in the fast attack are my Scarabs. The Scarabs are two nine-mans. With the Novak Dynasty buffs, these guys can get up to strength four with an AP one or even two on sixes to wound. It's a lot of volume of attacks to be able to pick units like Marines up off the board. Unfortunately, haven't rolled really good for these guys lately, and they haven't been able to pick up Marines like I'd like them to. But the, the AP helps at least them be able to push damage through and not just run into five mans and only be able to tar pit them. They can actually pick up guys if left alone. Uh, moving out of the fast attacks, we'll move over into the troops for a unit that kind of plays in the same aspect of the, what the Scarabs do. And that is my Necron Warriors. I have a 19-man squad of Necron Warriors with Go's uh, Reapers, so they can advance and shoot these. This guy, the, the main goal with these guys in the army is to be able to perform Ancient Machineries and resolve it at the end of my turn since their objective secured. 19-man, uh, why not uh, 19, not 20? I figure if you can eliminate a 19-man, a you can probably take out a 20-man too. It, was, it isn't that much more. So the one guy doesn't hurt me that much. I still have Big Brick. They still reanimate really well, especially with the Res Orb in the army. And they can cover a lot of field. You know, with the reanimations, I can start to put guys back in the direction I want to go next and start moving these guys and have little reactions and movements during my opponent's turn. So that's the core of the army as far as the battlefield's concerned. Some of my more fun units and intricate units are over in the elites. I have two squad, uh, two Catans. These are my tag team champions of the world. They have many, 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 many good utilities. Recently, just really seeing how powerful Sky of Falling Stars can be. Uh, but mostly, these guys are just pains in the butt to try to remove. So they stand on the front line, and unless you have multiple phases that you can do damage to them in, uh, more like three or more, they really get a chance to run amok and do some damage. For a while, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep the Void Dragon in, and move down to a transcendent, but I feel like the points that you save on the void dragon, you there one, there wasn't really much for me to do with it, and two, it's just those points that you're spending on what the void dragon can put out there, especially in vehicle matchups, is really really strong. Uh, last in the elites is the uh, tomb spiders, my canoptic spiders. So these guys uh, put out twelve shots apiece with those particle beamers. Typically, they are an escort for my Technomancer, so they're a nice thing to get buffed off Canoptic Control Node, and they also uh, just beat up Marines to no other. Their profile, their strength, their damage, and their AP 
is just perfect for cutting through and cleaning up Marines reliably. They're also monsters, monsters so the failsafe overcharge gives them plus D3 attacks. Uh, moving into the HQs now. Now we know what everything that the list is running on. Here's the extra little power. So for starters, I have two Chronomancers. The two Chronomancers give out a five up in bone. Uh, this can go on the Warriors if I want to push them forward, go on the Spiders if it's late in the game, as well as going on the Scarabs to be able to advance them up the field and get objectives early with the Scarab speed and mass size. These tech Chronomancers have a large move, so late in the game they can grab objectives and are all around difficult and kind of lead to being a trap for assassination because these guys usually don't spend a lot of time out in the front lines. The last two HQs I have first is the Overlord. The Overlord is a Pharon with a Resurrection Orb. So this guy can give out two My Will Be Dones, as well as the Movement Buff. And he's a good late game resource to pick some Scarabs or Warriors back up on the field with that Res Orb. Lastly, the Technomancer. My Technomancer has a Warlord trait to give him Thrall of the Silent King for plus three inches to his auras. So Canopta Control Node goes up to a nine inch aura. Uh, he also has a failsafe overcharger, so he can give a canoptic unit plus one attack, or if it's a monster, D3, taking the spiders up to D3 attacks extra a piece if he hits them. Uh, he also has the veil. Being a slower backfield character, it lets him kind of pick and choose who he wants to veil later in the game. And lastly, he has the ability to put units back into core units at the beginning of each one of my command phases. What's nice with this is he can do that to the spiders. So the spiders have core. He could put a spider back in a squad if it's eliminated, and that's a big six-wound body going back in the squad. All right, so to me and Lane are going to be playing Data Scry Salvaging tonight, and looking at his list and what he's bringing, my secondaries I'm going to be taking are going to be uh, Engage on All Fronts. I want to test this out, try it, and see how it feels on the long table edge, see if I can't score more than that than I do with Purge the Vermin. I think it'll be a little bit easier for me to keep momentum and be aggressive, but we'll see We'll see how that plays out. Second, I'm gonna be doing Ancient Machineries because there's a lot of objectives in the middle. So there's really a lot of opportunities to score that. And last will be Treasure of Aeons because again, I wanna start pushing for Engage and push out of my zone. So if I'm doing that, I can pick up extra points on that for holding the objectives that he's going to put, make a little harder for me to get to later in the game. All right. So that's my list for today. Thanks for listening. And we'll hopefully see how they perform tonight.